heard my parents say that they were going to Dairy Queen. So I snuck into the back seat and waited and waited and waited. Okay, I clearly didn't think this through. It's taking them forever to get in the car. Once they finally got in the car, I crouched down low. When my father asked my mom if she wanted anything else, I popped up and said, I want a milkshake. I've never heard two adults scream louder or higher. Now my parents had a good reason to respond fearfully, which I clearly had not thought through. Not only were they caught by surprise, but they felt like they were in a familiar and, and safe place where they should have known the outcome. But isn't that where we're the most vulnerable when we don't expect something to happen? Our reactions are more elevated, more guttural, more instinctual. Fear over faith. The sermon has been preached thousands of times. How you can vanquish your fears by just having faith. I stand before you to persuade you to do the opposite. Have fearful faith. I will do this by discussing how fear affects our bodies. The symbiotic nature of faith and fear and how you can choose to have fearful faith. Let's first look at how fear affects our bodies. According to the National Institute of Mental Health, about 40 million American adults have some type of anxiety disorder. An anxiety disorder is a condition in which you experience frequent, powerful bouts of anxiety that interfere with your life. This type of fear can get in the way of family, career, and social obligations. If what happened in the story was done to you, you might have felt the physical response and anticipation. Maybe laughter or even your heart speeding up a bit. Our nervous system has an important job to protect, warn, and defend all the other systems in our bodies. To respond in very concrete ways. This will happen in times of happiness, sadness, and like the case of our story, fear. However, does the same event always trigger a given response? If somebody says they would like a milkshake, you would most likely not scream. But in the context of our story, this automatic response may very well be followed by a fight response. Like to punch them. How about the fear that comes with anxiety? Our body does not know the difference between the innocuous boogeyman and the possibility of something that can cause true fear. The National Institute of Mental Health also said when you feel frightened, your mind prepares you to respond to the emergency or threat. It increases the blood flow to your muscles, increases your blood sugar, and focuses your mind on the thing that's scaring you. This can have several effects. Your heartbeat gets faster, your, your breathing speeds up, you sweat more, your stomach churns, you can feel dizzy, frozen on the spot, have a loss of appetite, get a dry mouth, or your muscles tense up. Fear can last for a short time, but it can also last much longer and stay with us. In some cases, it takes over our lives, affecting our appetite, sleep, and concentration for long periods of time. Fear stops us from traveling, going to work or school, or even leaving the house. It prevents us from doing simple things and impacts our health. By faith, Noah, being warned of God concerning things not seen yet, moved with godly fear, preparing an ark to the saving of his house, through which he condemned the world and became the heir of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Hebrews 11:7. This is a perfect example of the symbiotic nature of faith and fear. Noah moves with godly fear. For over 120 years, his body was overcome with a fast heart rate, breathlessness, and churning. But alas, the ark was completed, and Noah's faith and obedience was rewarded. So what's the benefit of fear? Survival? The compilation of our father's story in our lives? Could it be as simple as moving forward and not looking back? In Noah's instance, fear drove him to work decades to complete the ark. Decades. Think about that. No impending doom. There was not immediate fear of death. Noah understood that this was not an overnight deadline. This was not like a 16-year-old young lady memorizing her speech a week before competition. This fear was not actualized until years, decades, centuries later. What if God needed to enact fear for something more imminent? What if we did not work out our worship in fear? Imagine yourself being told to evacuate your city. 
You are told there is no hope for you there. God has turned away his salvation and has chose to wipe the city clean. All you have to do is leave and never look back. Run, you are told. Run. Seems pretty clear and eminent to me. Here we have one standing in obedience and ran, saving his life. Another chose to run but did not fear the command of not looking back and chose to turn and look. Sodom and Gomorrah shows us that fear in faith is important. Noah's fearful faith is worked out in perseverance. Like a parent teaching a greater lesson than how to be an adult and a good person. Lot's fearful faith is worked out quickly in survival. Much like a parent scolding a child for running into the street. One has a long-term effect in how the child will act as an adult, and the other impacts the day-to-day -day survival of that child. Lot's wife had the faith to run, but not the fear to not look back. In this case, faith and fear uncoupled results in death. So is the old saying, paralyzed with fear, a definitive? It seems not. Faith and fear both do indeed coexist. Fear is not always something that stops you, but forces you to move with purpose. Like building an ark before a history-changing flood. Why would God design our bodies to react to fear? Are we so stubborn that we must hit a brick wall before we look to him for help? Fear is something that can help us. Our third point today is how we can choose to have fearful faith. We are not wired to be stricken still. We do indeed work out our faith in fear we need to recognize that despite everything we may have been told fear is not always a bad thing it warns us of things yet to be seen and readies us for the unpreparable so how do we put this into action david wrote in psalms 2 11, serve the lord with fear and celebrate his rule with trembling god prepares us for what's to come as a servant that looks for his master for minute-to-minute -minute direction. If we are fearful, we must look to our Lord for minute-to-minute -minute direction. Then when we get it to celebrate the news, no matter what the task is at hand, no matter how big the ship is to build. Paul wrote in Philippians 2.12, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have always obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, Continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling. We are told to work hard, stay on task, be laser focused. After we are given the message, we do not stop building the ark, even if we are scoffed, mocked, or questioned. What if I stop? The fear of recourse from our master should far away the perception of our peers. What if Noah stopped building? How would have that have affect his story? How would it have changed? Would we still have the story of the animals marching two by two? What if you stopped in your story? What would change in your life? I propose that we, like Noah, David, Lot, and Paul, can all work out our fear and faith and serve the Lord with fear and trembling. Today we have discussed how fear affects our bodies, the symbiotic nature of faith and fear, and how you can choose to have fearful faith. Our fear of God should be greater than our fears of everything else. I challenge you to ask the Lord to show you today, what is your ark? Identify the fear that is paralyzing you and fearfully implore the Lord to work out your faith to do his will. Your ark may change in the face of history or it might just satisfy your sweet tooth. While I may have permanently scarred my parents to forever look in the back of the car before they leave, I did get my milkshake. So I think it was a win-win. <laughs>